Thank you for joining us. Have you ever wondered why you enjoy the things you enjoy? Why you think the things you think and do the things you do? Why you are the person that you are? These are all questions that you ask frequently when studying psychology. As a psychology graduate, I've had a deep fascination with what makes us the people that we are today. And a large part of that is our sexualities and our sexual preferences. Sex education is lacking. Here in the UK, there is an abundant lack of willingness to talk about, acknowledge or explore sex as a topic. And this ignorance has sadly spread to the education curriculum. Unlike the previous two videos which have addressed say, the masochism of sexual fetish and the paraphilia, today's topic will be both independent of say, the masochism and also intrinsically linked. In today's video, we'll be addressing the psychology of cuckoldry, the various ways in which these attractions can manifest, the potential dangers, and of course, how they can be practiced safely. Cuckoldry is a subject which is surrounded by a lot of negative stigma due to its abundant disregard for the modern societal expectations concerning loyalty and monogamy. And like all forms of polyamory and polygamy, there is much about cuckoldry which is misunderstood and misrepresented. So, what is cuckoldry? The dictionary term for a cuckold is a man whose wife is sexually unfaithful, often regarded as an object of derision, and the term is often used historically as a derogatory one. By definition, a cuckold is a partner, typically a husband of an adulterous wife, who in many cases is aware of their partner's infidelity but remains passive although cuckoldry in the context of a sexual kink or fetish deviates slightly from this definition. It should also be noted that the correct term for a female cuckold is a cuckwin, although the slang cuck can be used for both male and female participants of cuckoldry. For the sake of simplicity, we'll predominantly be using the term cuckold throughout this video due to men making up the vast majority of those who consider themselves to be cucks, although we will also be addressing female presentation of a kink later on in the video, and much of the information surrounding the psychology of cuckolds is equally applicable to the psychology of cuckwins. Interestingly, the term cuckold is derived from the cuckoo bird, which will lay its eggs in another bird's nest, resulting in that bird raising chicks which weren't its own. This ties into the historical use of the word cuckold, relating to a man whose wife is unfaithful and who unknowingly raises children which are not his own. So, where does the modern interpretation of the term cuckoldry differ from the dictionary definition? Well, to start with, self-proclaimed cuckolds are often present for the act of their partner participating in sexual relations with somebody else, and the term can be vaguely described as consensual non-monogamy within an otherwise monogamous relationship. Cuckoldry often consists of an individual who is aroused by the idea or the sight of their partner being sexually active with somebody else, and usually involves being present during the act or receiving messages, photographs or videos depicting it. Unlike other forms of consensual non-monogamy, such as polyamorous or polygamous relationships, cuckoldry is almost always voyeuristic in nature, and is centred around the cuckold being a passive observer to the act, rather than actively participating, and as such, cuckoldry differs from having a threesome or swinging. Cuckoldry also deviates from other forms of non-monogamous relations in its strictly sexual nature, and although emotional cuckoldry is a thing, cuckoldry as an act is almost exclusively physical, and usually doesn't involve emotional infidelity. So, how common is cuckoldry? One survey by the Kinsey Institute found that of the 4,000 men surveyed, 58% of them had fantasies concerning cuckoldry, with the same survey finding that of the 4,200 women interviewed, 25% of them identified with having thoughts or fantasies concerning being cuckolded themselves. What's more, a 2016 study by Pornhub found that there were upward of 1.75 million searches for cuckold related topics each and every month, putting it within the top 100 search terms on the platform. So, what are the various different kinds of cuckoldry? Just like all things in sex, there are various different kinds of cuckoldry. And while many share a great deal of similarities, they still have their own unique intricacies which are worth noting. One term which is often used interchangeably with cuckoldry is hotwifing, whereby a man watches his partner have sex with another person and does not actively participate. Although this may seem like the same thing as cuckoldry, there is reason to suggest that they are in fact two very different kinks. Dr. Justin Le Miller, the founder and editor of Sex and Psychology states that in cuckoldry there is usually a BDSM element involved which isn't present in hotwifing. Lamilla goes on to state that unlike those who participate in hotwifing, cuckolds often choose men that they view as sexually superior to themselves, adding an element of submission and emotional masochism to the dynamic. Unlike cuckoldry, men who participate in hotwifing often derive sexual gratification from the opposite effect, viewing the act as an ego boost whereby another man can experience how great their wife or their partner is and therefore that dynamic lacks the underlying degradation element which Lamilla says defines cuckoldry. Another notable difference is the use of terminology in both situations. 
A man who participates in hot wifing is referred to as a stag, a term which itself carries an underlying element of masculinity, whereas a cuck might describe himself as a beta, often using terms such as alpha or bull to describe the individual who they witnessed having sex with their partner. The relationship between cuckoldry and masochism is an interesting one. Unlike linear or conventional dom sub dynamics, the submissive is not physically subjected to any forms of physical or direct emotional dominance. Instead, they submit by relinquishing the sexual dependency of their partner to somebody that they view as a superior or an alpha. Their submission is a vicarious one, submitting vicariously through the medium of their partner rather than submitting directly to an individual. So what's the psychological root of an individual's attraction to cuckoldry? Of course, as ever, there is no individual answer to that question which can be applied universally, although there are several different factors which psychologists believe might contribute to one's attraction to cuckoldry. The first potential motivator is compersion, a term which means to take joy in somebody else's pleasure. To put it simply, compersion might influence an individual's attraction to cuckoldry because they take an innate satisfaction from their partner receiving a degree of sexual gratification that they are not capable of offering. This could be apparent in cases where the male partner either suffers from severe erectile dysfunction, has a micropenis, or is clinically unable to perform in the bedroom and therefore lacks the sufficient ability to bring adequate pleasure to their partner. In these scenarios, the individual might learn to find joy in their partner receiving pleasure from somebody else due to being otherwise incapable of offering that degree of gratification themselves. Compersion is a very popular factor in cuckoldry amongst individuals who are medically unable to have full sexual intercourse, as it allows their partner to still experience everything that sex has to offer without the parameters of their medical limitations. Although only affecting 0.6% of men, individuals whose penises are clinically defined as micropenises often develop deep-rooted masochistic tendencies related to humiliation and degradation as a coping mechanism, and as such, compersion isn't the only link between perceived sexual inadequacy and cuckoldry, but of course it's an important one nonetheless. Another potential contributor to cuckoldry is as a safe place to explore one's own sexuality. In fact, Dr. David Lee explains in his interview of MBG relationships that if a cuckold is questioning their sexuality, they may see their partner as a proxy for him having sexual relationships with another man, and therefore can be seen as a way of exploring one's own sexuality while at a distance. The next potential appeal of cuckoldry is an obvious one. We tend to find an innate attraction to the taboo, things that we are told we should not enjoy or do. And it's that very societal stigma towards the subject which makes it appealing to some people. It's so fundamentally and culturally ingrained in us to fear and loathe infidelity, and in many cases arguably so. But to explore the feelings associated with infidelity while in the parameters of a consensual relationship can be seen as exhilarating to some, with a the jealousy they feel only adding to that effect. The next two contributing factors are ones which have already been addressed in some detail, so I'll only cover them briefly but the first of which is the power dynamic cuckoldry brings with it, whereby the cuckold derives intense sexual gratification from the humiliation of their partner being satisfied better by somebody else. In many cases, it's often less about the sex itself and more about the submission of power and the dynamic that brings with it, with an emphasis on degradation and humiliation. The next factor is candidalism, which can be associated far more so with hot wifing than it can do with cuckoldry itself. Candidalism is in essence the thrill of pride an individual might take in showing off or sharing their partner with somebody else, and interestingly is the main factor of attraction for cuckwins, who more commonly find attraction in the pride they feel when watching their partner show off their sexual prowess with somebody else, rather than being aroused by the humiliation. Of course there are a great many other factors which might influence an individual's attraction to cuckoldry, but here are just a few of the most prominent explanations for the development of the attraction. Much like anything sex related, there are both positives and negatives to take into account when it comes to cuckoldry, and we'll address that in the next part of the video. So, what are the positives and negatives? Cuckoldry can be an incredibly positive practice when done for the right reasons, especially in scenarios where one member of the relationship physically cannot satisfy their partner due to medical reasons, allowing the relationship to remain sexually exciting beyond any previous limitations. Cuckoldry can also act as a means of taking control over something you might otherwise be powerless over, for example as a means of coming to terms with an affair or infidelity in your relationship. So long as it's practiced consensually and all parties have agreed upon the boundaries and parameters they are comfortable with, then cuckoldry has the potential to be beneficial and enjoyable for all parties. But that doesn't mean it isn't without risks and drawbacks. One such risk, which comes with all non-monogamous practices, is the way in which jealousy presents itself and how individuals handle those feelings. Cuckoldry is something that many people fantasize about, but that doesn't mean that everybody who enjoys the concept would cope with it being a reality. And unfortunately, often individuals will realise midway through that they've made a mistake and they are in fact uncomfortable with what's happening. 
It is particularly common in cases where the cuckold has low self-esteem, as that low self-esteem can often attract them to the concept but repulse them from the actuality of it, sometimes resulting in the relationship itself suffering in the long term. Another potential issue might stem from the individual trying to justify and replicate an affair that's happened in the past on their own terms as a means of taking control over the situation, which might help in the short term but can often cause more harm than good. Finally, the most damaging risk of cuckoldry is when one member of the relationship coerces the other into participation. This can happen in a variety of ways, but most commonly occurs when a man has fantasies of their partner being with other men and arranges the sexual relation either without their partner's full consent or without properly discussing it with them. This is of course both disgusting and wrong and can be hugely traumatic for the individual who's coerced or persuaded into something they are not comfortable with. Much like anything in sex, the most important thing is communication and discussion. Sitting down with your partner and talking about your fantasies so you can explore them together in a safe, consensual and secure environment. Cuckoldry has the potential to be very enjoyable, but it also has the potential to be traumatic and distressing, and the only way to avoid that is to properly communicate with your partner or partners and to explore your boundaries and fantasies together. I cannot stress the importance of discussion enough. Communication is of paramount importance, and it's the only way of ensuring that you can explore your kinks with your partner in a safe and consensual way. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just thought I'd record a little post video audio for you all just to say this has been a, a subject which I found particularly interesting to study. Obviously with the previous two topics we've covered on this channel, the psychology of sadism and the psychology of masochism, they're both topics which I encounter a lot in my day to day life, given the fact that I work professionally in the porn industry and also work as a live event professional dominant. Cuckoldry is a kink which I personally do not have and it's a kink that prior to this study I hadn't done all that much research into. So it's been fascinating to learn about all of this stuff whilst I was researching for the video. If you guys have any questions about cuckoldry or about any other kinks or fetishes that I might cover in future videos, please feel free to drop me a message either down below in the comments or on my social media platforms. I'll link them all in the bio and I hope you have a wonderful day.